Howdy folks, welcome back to another channel update. Uh, what is it? It's June! It's June, which means, and we, we, have just completed phase one of the Dawnbreakers saga. That is correct, we now have a name that actually works for the people, for the, uh, for the characters as a group, rather than, I, I was gonna call it the Boundless Saga, and then, uh, Character Crusade is doing, uh, a couple of a couple, a, a series of challenges, like character workshop challenge things, be, uh, called the Unbound Challenges. Uh, character Crusade Unbound is a thing, so I didn't want to do Boundless because of that. Basically. Uh, speaking of Character Crusade Unbound, we'll talk about Dawnbreakers in a minute. Speaking of Character Crusade Unbound, the background footage for this update is of Sol Vonder for Rain. I'm not sure what he's doing because I haven't actually played the back played the background footage yet. But it's going to be of, it, or it is of, Solvander for Rain and his companion Eridor as they do whatever it is they're doing. Uh, Solvander is my season two character for the Character Crusade Unbound, un Unbound Challenge. Season two, Ghosts of Yore. I'll leave the link to both the Character Crusade Unbound season two page. I think it's just on the same Character Crusade Unbound page. Um... I'll leave a link to that, and also to Solvander's uh, adventure journal, or character journal, or whatever, in the description. Um, you don't have to read all of the stuff that he's been through if you don't want, but the first section, like the first biggish section of Solvander's journal is me just trying to work through what he, like, who he is as a character. Uh, so if you want to see my process, kind of, for coming up with characters, you can go check that out if you want to. If not, that's okay, too. Um, so let's, uh, let's, let's talk about the Dawnbreakers now, eh? Eh? So, uh, yeah, they have a name now. Um, I wanted to give them a name before the end of Phase 1, which we've gotten through the end of Chapter 2 of Honorless, so, I boy, that went fast. That went really fast for me, anyway. I mean, also, I've also had a whole bunch of other stuff going on, courtesy of life. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was fast. Um, I wanted to give them a name before the end of, of Phase 1, and I sort of got that. Because at the end of Phase 1, which we're at, uh, I, I knew I was going to do this, and I wanted to have a name for the playlist that is all of the episodes, or all of the relevant episodes, really, um, of all the entire Dawnbreakers saga in one playlist chronologically. Which, uh, took some time to do, but it's sort of, it's, it's done. It, it's updated as of, uh, which episode of Executioner? I think it's updated as of episode slash entry seven of Executioner. So the end of, so, uh, the end of phase one, so all of the first and second chapters have been put in the thingy. So that's that's fine. I'll probably update it again, or it won't be updated again until I get to the end of chapter three of Honorless, which will be whenever it ends up being. I don't know. Um, just for the sake of not having like long stretches of time where it's just one character because like you you would have gone through the whole playlist chronologically and then hit a spot where none of the rest of the stuff has been played yet and it's not ranged and it's just like all of chapter three of intonation for example just completely unbroken yeah <laughs> so um i'm i have notes here and i'm kind of going out of order but that's okay with me notes are flexible uh dawnbreakers I decided to give them the name Dawnbreakers because Dawnbreaker is the first Daedric artifact uh, that was found and used in the series. Not chronologically, uh, in terms of like what was happening in the story, but I mean like chronologically as in when the episodes released. In this case, the uh, the playlist, the big the Dawnbreaker saga playlist is chronologically in terms of story and l like in world time not our world time dawnbreaker was the first thing that uh that got found in our world time 
And it's it's the only I think the only Daedric artifact that has been kept and used so far. Uh, Kitoa had her scenes ring for a while. Uh, she also sort of had Savior's hide for a while. It's currently in a chest uh, because she doesn't want anything to do with that because it's hard. Uh, I don't think we've had any other Daedric artifacts. Yes, yes, we have the Mask of Clavicus Vile. But since Arden isn't using the Mask of Clavicus Vile, I decided, hey, let's 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 name the group after the Dawnbreaker Sword. The idea for that actually kind of came from uh, Matt Colville's Rat Catchers series, in which uh, the adventuring group, the or the Rat Catchers, that the main character Hayden used to be a part of, uh, they were called the Sunbringers because of a similar sword. Well, not a similar sword, but a similar story. They found a sword named Sunbringer, and that's why that's where they got their name. So I figured, hey, let's let's do a kind of a Colville reference ish and name these guys the Dawnbreakers. I haven't seen it used anywhere as a team name for Skyrim yet. And I really hope it isn't something weird like like a name that some other group has used in real life for nefarious purposes. I really hope that that's why it I hope it hasn't been used because someone else thinks, or like everyone else thinks it's too obvious or something. I don't know. I'm a little leery about it, but it's it works for them, and you all understand the context. So, I, th I think that's all that matters right now, <laughs> is that you guys understand the context of why they are the Dawnbreakers they have because Arden found the sword, and they will eventually come together as a big group. I don't really know how that's gonna happen. I know how it'll... I know one of the things that will happen when they're part of a, when they're all a group, but I don't know how I'm gonna get there from here. That's part of the fun. Let's be honest, that's part of the fun. So, um, yeah, that's the Dawnbreakers. Uh, let's talk about Kinoa, shall we? Because we just finished up her part of phase one. Uh, going into phase two, by the way, I might as well just get the schedule stuff out of the way. I've said this in, I think, every channel update since I started doing channel updates. Um, or, well, at least for, for the Dawnbreakers saga. See, it's so much easier to say the Dawnbreakers saga than it is to say this whole Skyrim thing that I'm doing. All four parts of it. Four, four and a half. Ingrath. Uh, Executioner doesn't really have a- it's not a part, but it's sort of- it's half a part. It's vignettes. We'll talk about him later because he's being challenging right now. Yes, he does. So, uh, schedule going forward. I've said it a number of times, but going forward from here, phase two is basically just going to be, uh, one chapter at a time rather than the double chapters. Just because I know the characters now, I can- just break into their voices if I need to. I obviously just pull Arden out of nowhere. Hello, we've got stuff in the background. Gajita's concerned. Anyway. Okay, no, we are not going to get stuck as a test. No, okay, bye, bye, bye. <laughs> so yeah, I think I've got the characters pretty much pretty much under wrap right now. I I've got them pretty pretty well established. So I don't need another two chapters each to establish characters or story or anything. We're in it now. So I can just go uh, chapter three, chapter three, chapter three, chapter three, and then an update, maybe. And then chapter four, chapter four, chapter four, chapter four. And it'll depend on where everyone gets in their stories. I am not sure how or when I'm going to start putting stories together, if that makes sense. It, when when the characters are going to start, like, their storylines are going to start mixing. I don't know what I'm going to do at that point, because we've had these nice, f these nice, concise, uh, separate playlists and series for each of them, but when they start getting all twisted together, it's going to be like... For example, I don't know if this is actually going to happen, but like, for instance, if Yarnvita showed up in Honorless somewhere, or if Zaytest showed up in Intonation somewhere, 
or if Ingrath shows up in pretty much anyone. Well, if, if Ingrath shows up in pretty much anyone's series, then that'll be in their series and not in Executioner for just reasons. Because Executioner is the, the weird Patreon thing where they get to see what happens early, but I don't really want to do that if it's going to be interacting with another character. Well, another established character, I should probably say. So, wh one who has their own series going. There's there's a whole lot of caveats here, but yeah, you know what I mean when I say that, I think. Uh, so if, if he shows up, it's not as big a deal, and he's probably gonna start showing up in people's stuff anyway. He kind of already has, if you've watched Unblooded. Uh, he made a brief, brief appearance. <laughs> that was fun. But if, uh, if any of the others start, I don't know how I'm gonna do that. I don't know if I have to worry about it yet, but I don't have a clue how I'm going to do that because, uh, I don't know. I may have set myself up for some trouble with the, with the Dawnbreakers saga chronological playlist. Because, I mean, now I know where everyone is chronologically, but Arden and Ingrath are slightly farther ahead than pretty much everyone else. Kinoa is actually slightly behind everybody else because she doesn't rest ever. <laughs> um, or if she does, it's, it's she's, she's sitting in a chair somewhere and just falls asleep on a table in a dungeon because she does that for some reason. I don't know. Um... What was I just talking about? I just got off track. Oh, I may have set myself up for trouble with the playlist because now where I well I know where everyone is chronologically and physically. It's it's hard to plan and the kinds of things where we have characters inter interacting with with each other, I kind of have to plan that. So <laughs> I don't it's really difficult to plan that and still have everything it it's it's tricky it's really tricky i think i think i'm going to be able to do that when we get around to vagrant again but yeah i have no idea just we're going to we're going to touch on this before we i'm basically going backwards through my notes at this point anyway um I have no idea what the heck I'm going to do with Ingrath, speaking of tricky timelines and whatnot. Uh, cause right now Ingrath is very much ahead of everybody else. Like, a lot ahead. Aside from Arden, I know where he is right now because I've played through the first half of chapter 3 for intonation. So I know kinda where he is when. I don't know where Ingrath is. At the same time, ish, like I, I know, I know Ingrath's next immediate action, and I know where he is, and I know what he wants to do there. Um, but that's a thing that probably isn't going to get shown until Chapter Three of Vagrant, which means I don't really know what I'm going to do between Chapter Three of Intonation and Chapter 3 of Vagrant. It may end up being that instead of having an episode of Executioner every, like, after every chapter, I may have to, at least for this first bit, have a long period of time where we don't see Ingrath in Executioner, but we might see him in other places. Like, how do I want to put this? So, like, if- if- I would have to go through all of the chapter threes, and then get to the end, and then we would have whatever episode of Executioner. Yeah, I don't know how I'm going to do- the, the moral of the story is that I have no clue what I'm going to do with him right now, because I messed up my own timelines, so that's fun. If anyone has any ideas as to how I can unravel and untangle this particular knot, that would be excellent. If you could leave that in the comments, I would be most, most grateful. Don't know if I would use it, use suggestions, but, and you know, anything helps at this point because my brain is a scrambled mess. 
Um, I, uh, somebody did actually make a suggestion. He, I don't think he realized he was making a suggestion at the time. He was, uh, for this problem that I'm having, but it was, uh, he was suggesting it for a completely different reason, but, um, Dovris, who I will link to in the description because, boy, howdy. He's got some stuff going, you should go check it out, but he suggested, uh, I'm not going to say what he knows. Um, <laughs> he knows because he's the one who suggested it, but he suggested a thing that I might be able to have Ingrath do, or at least sort of interact with, uh, for maybe a couple of episodes between all of the other things as kind of a, a, a time skip method, just so that, like, he can still be in the one place, but, and still doing things? But I don't really have to move him forward in time. That's... Yeah, that's what I meant. What That was a confusing set of words right there. I apologize if that was a little bit unintelligible. But yeah, Dovris suggested a thing. Uh, and I am thankful. Thank you, Dovris. Um, also, thank you for, for the other things. I'll give shoutouts to people at the at the end as well. But yeah, first, first shoutout goes to Dovris. Because Dovris. Because Dovris. <laughs> yeah, that's that's a valid reason now. Just because Dovris. I I feel like Tatija thinks that a lot, just because Dovris. Anyway. Uh the other thing that I've been thinking of doing with Ingrath is doing flashbacks. Uh I don't really know if I'm gonna go through with that idea. He's got a lot I mean he's he's hundred and fourteen years old. He has a lot of backstory to cover. I don't know the timeline that I want to cover that in. I don't know how much of that is going to come out when he's interacting with the other characters. And if it comes out then, I don't really want to show that happening until then. Because otherwise it just feels weird. Narrative decisions. I am thinking through narrative decisions while I'm talking to you. I apologize, but, you know, consider this a little bit of an insight into the mind of a writer. But yeah, doing flashbacks for him, I don't I don't know if I want to do that. It would be a good way to not have to leap through time with him or not have to move him forward through time until I know who's going to be where next. Um basically, I have to I have to kind of stall him a little bit and wait for everyone else to get ahead of him so that I can sort of fill in. And I mean, I I'm going to have to do that anyway, is just fill it like whoever is ahead is going to have to get like, there's fill in, in place, it's, it's a giant fuster clock right at the moment. I apologize. So yeah, um, that. Moving on, because I've been just kind of futzing about with this for the last five minutes. Um, Kinua, I was gonna recap her earlier. Um, uh, her story is going pretty much according to plan. Uh, the thing, the thing with Sending did not go according to plan. It turns out that when you have Moonlight Tales installed, all sorts of things go screwy with that quest. So I roleplayed around it as best I could, and I think it worked out. But like, it was a weird day. Every time I walked to that cave and Sending just sort of, we went through the conversation and he just, <laughs> dead. Um, I, I got around it, ish. <laughs> uh, spoilers for those who have it's a little late for spoilers just whenever there's a channel update there's probably going to be spoilers for the stuff that's come before I apologize uh, just be aware of that uh, but yeah she um, I have I have been hearing some why don't you just do this in for some of the episodes of Honorless, particularly the one where she's debating whether or not to go see the Greybeards. Um, or, or why she doesn't just shout already. Uh, and it's because Kinua has got some really, really deep set stuff that she's gonna have to deal with in order to, I guess, come into her power a little bit. I don't really know why, like, I felt the need to explain that in case it wasn't obvious. Yeah, we'll know more about her story going forward. She's got some things to deal with. 
but she's sort of dealing with them. Um, there will be moments where she kind of backslides a little bit, and moments where she makes steps. And I mean, that's true of every character, but with her, it's going to be especially funky. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how that goes. Um, so yeah, I have in my notes here that Kidua, she moves slowly on purpose. So, yeah. Um, I will say, speaking of moving slowly on purpose, I, I, for the Dawnbreaker Saga playlist, I have taken out a couple of the episodes where, um, not a whole lot happens, but for some reason I turned it into an episode anyway. I'm getting better at not doing that. Like, I'm getting better at stopping the recording and doing all of the, like, inventory management stuff off screen. Uh, because I don't think it's necessarily fun to watch unless it's twist. And I don't twist. I, I'm not twist. <laughs> um, I'm thinking of making some tweaks to my Patreon. Um, and by tweaks, I mean I'm thinking of getting rid of the tiers altogether, like the $5, $10 tier, and just dropping it down to if you donate a dollar or more, like the amount is completely up to you. But if you donate a dollar or more, you just get access to whatever I happen to throw on Patreon at any on every on any given month, which includes uh, the early episodes of Executioner and the uh, the audio stuff, the the short stories. There's only one. I think there's only one short story up right now, um, and it's a little bit of backstory between Ingrath and Zaytest. Um, there may be more in the future. There may be a little bit more of Ingrath's backstory in the future because I have a lot of I have a lot of writing about him. He's fun to write, for some reason. I don't know. Uh, he's just the kind of character that I like to write. He's also the kind of character that I like to play. Um. Anyway, um, I'm, I'm thinking of reorganizing it so if if it's it's basically a pay what you can, or pay what you want, that kind of thing. But yeah, I'm thinking of, of switching Patreon over to like one dollar or more and you get access to everything simply because I never really know what to post on Patreon. And I had these delusions of grandeur when I opened it up that it was going to be like super organized and there would be stuff for all the tears. And now I'm here and I'm like, I, uh, I am very grateful to everyone who has donated more than one dollar. But like, and like, that's amazing. And somewhat stunning, but I feel like everyone should have access to all of the same things because I don't really... I don't really have anything that I can post or do for the higher tiers that makes sense to do right now. So I might... I might do that. Let me know what you think. I'm especially interested in hearing from people who either are patrons of mine right at the moment, or aren't, but are considering it, but haven't for whatever reason. Um, I mean, I'm just looking forward to hearing from everybody on this. It's real rambly, and I apologize for that. It's just how I do. It's just how my brain functions. I'll try to cut out the, the most egregiously irrelevant bits, as I do. But I would also, speaking of, oh, speaking of Patreon, this this idea of like dialing it back to just one dollar or more, and you get to see all the things, um, I, that was actually also inspired by Dovris, because he has a Patreon, which you know, go check him out, cause he's cool. Uh, so thank you, Mister Dovris, uh, and I would also like to thank the patrons of mine, Stoop, the Wind. Simon, David, Gemma Burns, the t and the two food groups, Strudel and Haggis. There are a couple of new names in there, and I would like to give an especially huge thank you to you guys, because- or, well, you too, because... Yo, hi. <laughs> you, uh, you made my month, and it's not even- it's not even halfway through the month yet. I, I know I just spiked the mic. I apologize for that. I can see that in the waveform as we speak. Um, and with that, this is over half an hour long now, and it's getting very, very, very warm in my room without the fans on. So I'm going to call this channel update good, and go 
finish whatever I've got to finish next. There's a backlog. It's it's horrendous, but <laughs> I'll see y'all when I see you next. Uh, episode one of chapter three of Intonation should be coming out sometime in the middle of June. I don't really know when. I I'm I'm gonna keep trying to do the four four episodes a week thing. If at some point I switch back to Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, that's that's just gonna be a thing that happens, and I probably won't announce it. We'll see. We'll see. Cause, I mean, now that we're gonna do, we're we're gonna be doing more chapters. It's gonna be, it's gonna be a little bit faster going, but it'll be fine. It'll be fine. It's gonna be fine. So I'll see you whenever Arden comes back, and until then, have. A good one.